money, money. In the name of the Lord, there we go. No money can buy you out of this. Go ahead. But the whole land shall be divided by the fire of his just jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land. He's going to get rid of them. When he get that land, boy, he's going to get rid of them. He's going to kill everything in there. That's why it's not good to be in Jerusalem right now. It's not good. Now let's find out the Lord. Let's find out who the Lord taking. Let's go with uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse uh, 15. He said one left and one take. We'll find out who left. If you left in that man, you're going to be messed up. You're going to be dead. Birds going to be eating on your flesh. And we want to see you to the end of, of that thousand year resurrection. Until that end of that thousand year of peace, excuse me. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15. Go ahead, brother. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Excuse me, go back to verse 14, sorry. Go to 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You see what we tell him? He tells him the ones that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Meaning that those are the ones that was taken, taken with him. I'm up here, taken with him. And this is what the issue going on right now. We gotta find out who is left and who is taken. Now we see the ones that are taken. Go ahead, bro. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. See what I'm saying? He said, the ones that are with the Lord shall not prevent those that are sleep. Sleep. Understand what's going on here. You going to be the one, he said, one left and one taken. This is the one that's been taken back with him. Let's find out where he's taking you, man. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They were in that first resurrection. We in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 16. They were in that first resurrection. The first one they rise. They rising up. Those are the ones that were taken with him. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. No, they said we're going to be caught up in heaven. What he said we're going to be there? In the clouds. Why? Because he's going to have to give you your glory, your spirit to buy. That's what he's going to be caught up there. Not in the heavens, in the third heaven where the Father and the Son and, and the angels are. Stop believing these people when they're talking to you. Read this to them. Read that over again. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to be with him. But are we going to just hover around in space and go visit all the planets that they tell us we're going to visit? Are we going to be just in the cloud? No. We got to go back and do some business. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. Let's put Jesus on the ground. They don't want to put him on the ground. They don't want to be flying all out in space and, and the same thing flying with him. He didn't say nothing about that in that book. We just going to fly it all out in the third heaven uh, like Superman going out of the world. Stop believing in fairy tales. Read the book. Zechariah chapter 14. We're going to start with verse 1. Let's put Jesus on the ground. They don't want to put him on the ground once the saint, once he came and taken the saints off the ground. But we're going to put him on the ground. These are the ones that he, take, he took with him, the saints. Verse 1, go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord coming, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. So we understand this is when Jesus is coming, the day of the Lord. Go ahead. 
For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses riffled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. This is a bad time for whoever in the land of Israel at the time, and all over the world, he said the house is going to be rifled, meaning they're going to destroy your house. Your women, your wife, your little babies, your children, your, especially your daughters, they're going to be raped. And they ain't going to care nothing about, are oh, you a Christian? You better be in the right part of the wilderness where Jesus is going to protect you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. He fight against those nations? Did he tell you he's going to feed the birds with the kings of the captains of all those people? He said he's going to feed them birds with the why? Because he's going to kill them. Christ said he's going to do this. Let's put them on the ground. Verse 4, go ahead. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Where? On the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. That's where he desired to be. That's in his destination, not in heaven. In the Mount of Olives, when he come back, go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And that shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. When Jesus hit the earth, go look, if you get a map, go look over there and look at the Mount Sinai. When he hit the earth, his feet touched the Mount Sinai, he go flat. And everything that's around Jerusalem, he's going to destroy it. This is where he's he going to put them on the ground. After, after they was caught up in the air with him, this is the place they went. To Jerusalem, not heaven. Go ahead, verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Isaiah. Yes, sir. Yea, and ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Yes, sir. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Where you get those saints from? Mm -hmm. We just read. First Thessalonians chapter 14, he said, they got caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord. And after they met the Lord, they came right back down here to Jerusalem at Mount Sinai with him to do the business of the Lord. So stop believing this crazy crap about left behind, like the world's gonna go on as it is now. It's not. If you left behind, you're gonna be eaten by birds, because Christ's gonna kill all of y'all. The ones that are not taken with him. Now let's go get some understanding about how you be left behind. Well, excuse me, how you can come with him. Let's find out how you can come here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 2. I want to know how to be with him, so I want to be in that number that is left behind. Let's understand how not to be left behind. We want to be taken in that first resurrection. Most of the churches don't even understand. You got two resurrections. Isaiah chapter 56. We're going to start with verse 2. Let's understand how not to be left behind. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keep the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. This is what he said. You bless if you keep the Sabbath. It's very, very important. This is the Sabbath day, the seventh day that we're here. Now on Sunday, don't get me confused with these Sunday preachers. Come here on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day, not the first day. We understand this. He said, blessed is the man that doeth this and keepeth his Sabbath. And he's not just talking about the week of the Sabbath. He's talking about the holy days also. They are Sabbaths. Keep going. Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the unit say, Behold, I am a dry tree. 
He tells everybody, if you take hold of this Sabbath day, I don't care if you're Israelite, I don't care if you're a stranger, Gentile, Hamite, whoever, if you take hold of this Sabbath day, I'm going to bring you with me. This is who he brought to his holy mountain. The ones that doing what we're doing today. Keeping the Sabbath. Go ahead. Verse 4. For thus says the Lord unto the unit that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me. What? To please him. Understand words. Sometimes the smallest little word make a big difference in a sentence. To please him. That's what we're doing here today on the Sabbath day. To please the Lord so he would take us with him. We ain't just showing up here because it's just an ordinary church day. This means something. This means something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And take hold of my covenant. Go ahead. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So you mean to tell me, if I show up on a Saturday and not work, and this whole day, he going to give me his house? And he going to give me a better name? This is where it all starts at. Right here. On the Sabbath day. There's a lot more that we have to do. But this is where it starts at. Coming together on his holy day. He said, you know what? They mine. And I'm going to protect them. Don't take this all slack. Go ahead. Verse 6. Also the sons of the, of the stranger. Yes, sir. That join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from living in it and taketh hold of my covenant. Go ahead. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. This is how the saints got there. When they were caught up in the hell with him, when he came back to resurrect them at the seventh trump, this is how they got there. He said, I'm going to bring them to my holy mountain, which is in Jerusalem. These are the ones that were taken. When he said one was in the bed, one was taken, one was left behind. This is the one that were taken. Not a secret rapture, as they tell you in these stupid movies called Left Behind. This stuff is fiction. This stuff is not real. He said, we have a, obtained fables. We know the truth of God. We got a more sure word of prophecy that tells us how we're going to come and how he's going to do it. All you got to do is read. Ain't nothing secret about this. Ain't nothing secret. Go ahead, we finish with that? No, I'm going to start that 7 over Okay. Either them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. My house. Now, for some people that really say, well, that can issue your interpretation. I'm going to make it real clear for you where is this going to happen. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 22. Daniel 7 and verse 22. Some people, you got to be real simple with because they have to say, well, that holy mountain is in heaven. And he just told me his feet going to stand on the Mount of Olives where they're going to crush and kill everything in that. But they still thinking that holy mountain in heaven for my Jehovah Witness friend. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 22. So we're dealing with this left behind. Don't go watching the movies and thinking that this is how God do it. Oh yeah, Hollywood got it right. And you got a lot of preachers, the big time preachers on this TV and they endorsing this thing. They endorsing it. They standing behind the strong. Verse 22. Go ahead. Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Do you know the ancient of days? That's Jesus. Until he came. And it said the saints possessed the kingdom. Let's find out where this kingdom is. Let's jump down to verse 27. Go ahead. And the kingdom and the dominion and greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Where? If you don't know where the kingdom is, go outside and look up under the heaven, then you look down. That was the kingdom going to be right here upon this earth in Jerusalem. Under the whole heaven. I don't care which heaven you go to. 
The first heaven, second heaven, the third heaven. And heaven, he said, under the heaven. Right here upon this earth in Jerusalem. So you're not going out there. He's going to run this thing from earth. So, verse 27 again. And the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Those are the saints that he brought to his own mountain. The ones that were caught up, the ones that didn't eat swine flesh, the ones that under his Sabbath day, the ones that are not homosexuals, abomination and all this stuff, wearing women clothing, men wearing women clothing, women wearing men clothing, he cross dresses. Those are the ones he took to his holy mouth. So you want to find out who was taken and who was left? It's right here in the book. Before it, this happened, this earth going to be at peace. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 3. This earth shall be at peace because Jesus is ruling right now. Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to start at verse 3. Because you got to understand, when Christ killed these people, and he got to purify his earth, because we're going to have so much peace, he's going to clean it up, he's going to have the trees even rejoicing, he's going to have the waters clean, all this stuff going to be back to the original state where it was in the Garden of Eden. It's going to be clean. It's going to be clean. What a thing. Isaiah chapter 14, we're going to start with verse 3. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So he telling Israel, this Bible addresses to us, he telling he's going to give us rest when we serve in hard bondage. I told another brother in the world, I said, look at the world today. Israel is not at rest. They shoot us in the streets with these police officers. And most of all, we're killing ourselves. And that's the problem. It ain't just that the other nation are doing, we're doing it more to ourselves than they do. Right. So we gotta get peace from us first and all the other nations. He said this time shall be peace. This is this thousand year millennium period, if you want to call it, of rest time when Christ is sitting on David's throne in Jerusalem. Go ahead. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressed ceased? The golden city cease. Go ahead. The, the law has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He's telling me, he said, how has this golden city the cease and the oppression cease? Meaning that they're not going to oppress you no more. Don't get distracted. They're not going to oppress you no more. You're going to be in a city where you're going to be resting. You ain't even going to have to worry about Satan in this city. Because God going to chain him up. Amen. Go ahead, brother. He who smote the people in wrath with the continuing stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. Go ahead. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. How whole is the earth at rest? That's everything. Whole earth is at rest now. So we ain't got to worry about Satan and his followers and his evil angels at this time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedar of Lebanon said, Since thou art laid down, no fellow is come up against us. He said, Even the trees gonna rejoice because they're doing so much chemicals inside each other, inside this ground, that they're destroying the trees. Even the trees gonna be rejoicing. Meaning that they're going to flourish. You're going to see vegetation that you ain't never seen before sprout up and do what it's supposed to do. You don't need all this fertilizer. He's going to replenish everything. He's going to do it as it was from the Garden of Eden. And well, this, this is what I like right in verse 9. Go ahead. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. 
it has raised up from their throne all the kings of the nations. Hell from belief, the ones that uh, get the opportunity to be good, become God, we ain't gonna die no more. That we talking about hell, the grave. You're not gonna die no more. Understand that. But before all this thing can happen, he got to take care of one important spirit being. That's Satan. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. The rest cannot start until God removes the main one who breaking the rest. Revelation chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 1. Left behind. Left behind who? You better find out who you, which one will be left behind. You don't want to be the one left behind. Birds going to be eating all over on your flesh. You ain't going to know them way. You're going to be dead. So Jesus is going to kill you at this time. Yeah, I said it right. Jesus. Revelation chapter 20. We're going to start at verse 1. Like I said before, the earth cannot be at rest until you chain the, the biggest rest breaker. Verse 1, go ahead. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Yes, sir. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. He laid hold of Satan and bound him for a thousand years of what? That's when Jesus comes back in that 7,000 year, meaning that thousand year peace, we're going to be reigning on David's throne. Satan ain't going to be able to bother us no more. No more. Until the end of that thousand years. But go ahead. This is what he said he did to him. And cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So you're going to be bound up for that 1,000 years. Understand that, pay close attention, the beast and the false prophet, they're already in the lake of fire. They're burning as we speak. As we speak right now. Satan didn't even made it in the lake of fire yet. They're already in there. So, fool for thought, how Satan got a, a kingdom to burn somebody? Go ahead, brother. And I saw thrones, and they sat up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus yes, and sir. for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on, on their forehead or in their hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These are the ones that were taken. He said one was in the bed, one was left behind, and one was taken. These are the ones that was taken. Taken. Understand this, this is going to happen at one particular time. One particular time when Jesus comes back, period. So you're not going to be just secretly taken off the earth and you not see all this and go through it. And most of these people, man, they will be headed. They didn't take the mark of the beast. All this stuff, they went through something to get this uh, uh, Godship, per se, to be God just like our Father and uh, Jesus. Well, listen what he said here, verse 5. Go ahead. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You better, be, you better hope you get in that first resurrection. Hope you get in there. Because you're blessed if you get in there. But we got to make sure we're doing according to what the word says and follow his law to get in there. Go ahead, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part of the first resurrection. You see, he just said it. You blessed and holy if you take part in that first resurrection. Go ahead. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You ain't gonna die no more. You ain't gonna die no more. You blessed. Go ahead. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Oh, and oh here comes Satan now, like I said. He ain't going to bother you. He in prison right now at this thousand years because Jesus got to sit up on that throne and run this whole earth for 1,000 years like he was supposed to run when the children of Israel came out of Egypt at the time. He got to run this whole earth and run his law for 1,000 years. So we're looking at this thing, we understand at the end of that thousand years, 
ain't gonna say it. He got to be loose. So Jesus will talk these people all these years, all these years. And now it's gonna be time, it's gonna be put up and shut up time. Now we're gonna see if you really believe this. Go ahead, verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Yes, sir. God and made God to gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Can anybody count the, the sand of the sea? No. There's gonna be so many, he's gonna try to, he's gonna persuade to do this thing and follow. There's gonna be so many say to persuade to do this. Do it with him or to sin or to follow him. This is what, what Satan's job is right now, to go out and see how many he can get. God wanna know before he make you God, are you truly with him? Are you truly with him? Go ahead, bro. Verse nine. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city and the fire came down from God out of heaven and divided them. This is how crazy this man is. He gave you an opportunity within a thousand years to get it right. Understand, you're gonna have flesh and blood with the spiritual beings in that thousand years. You got some people who are gonna be God and some people who are gonna have to be proven. Understand that. Now, he telling me these people follow Satan and he cast a fire down to heaven and destroy them. Out of all that time, they still want to follow Satan. He giving us every opportunity to get it right. Go ahead, bro. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beasts and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night for so, hell. So I told you, Satan ain't the first person to get in the lake of fire. It's the beast and the false prophet. They were there for a thousand years. And God said, okay, it's time for Satan to go in there. He threw them in there, threw Satan in there. And they were persecuted forever, for day and night. Day and night. Go ahead, bro. And I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, whose face, from whose face uh -huh. the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Now we know who sat on that throne, that's Jesus. Go ahead. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. I don't know what book is that. The same book you got in your hand, you're going to be judged out of it. I'm going to be judged out of it. You're going to open them books and say, See, the Jeff, did you follow his commandment? Did you worship on the Sabbath day? Did you eat any swine? Did you put any Christmas trees up in your house? He's going to judge you off this book. And he's going to see, or you going to be in the book of life, which is given to his kingdom. Go ahead, brother. And the sea gave up the dead, which was in it, and, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their work. He said, and the sea gave up the dead, which is the one that are dead in the ground under the sea. And he said, which was in it, and death and hell, which is, there's not going to be no more dying no more. And hell, there's not going to be another grave no more. Not going to be dying. You're going to be in the lake of fire at this time, or you're going to be in the heavenly kingdom at this time. Death and hell, that's what we're talking about. No more dying and no more people being buried in the ground. He's going to cast them into the lake of fire. Lake of fire. Go ahead. He's going to read that. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So it won't be nobody dying no more. After this time, to the great white throne judgment. You're going to live forever somewhere. Whether you're going to be in the kingdom of God or whether you're going to be in this lake of fire. You're going to live forever. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is where it at. If you ain't found in that book of life, you're going to be in the lake of fire. And that's going to be truly left behind. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. It's the last one. Go ahead. Let's see about this left behind. Go ahead. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. So we know Jesus is upcoming. I come quickly to give you a reward. Whether I'm going to take you, or whether you're going to be left behind, so no birds can come out and eat your flesh. Go ahead. I am Alpha and Omega, 
the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus is the only God we ever dealt with from the beginning with, with Genesis with Adam and also in Revelations and we had the end of the world. He's the only God we ever dealt with. The Father never dealt with us. Go ahead. Bless the they that do his commandments. What? They said the commandments are too hard to do. Jesus nailed them to the cross. He nailed them. He said the commandments are done away with. They, tell, they told me that all my life, well, all my little Sunday church day. What did you say here? Blessed are they that do his commandments. Go ahead. That they may have right to the tree of life, may enter in through the gates into the city. 